And hello, good people of the internet. It is I, Tommy Kelly, and this is, of course, the Tommy Kelly Podcast. And this week, it is my birthday week. And uh, it's 25th of July, 1977, I was born, which makes me 41 this coming Wednesday. 41 is kind of it. I'm, I'm okay with my age and all that kind of thing. It was, it was getting older and all that. Like, there's no way I'd want to be 20 again. God, no. Or, uh... I, although at the same time I did enjoy turning 30 There seemed to be some sort of line in the sand That I walked over at that point And put a lot of stuff behind me So equally when I turned 40 It's 41 less so in a way <laughs> Like it's just you're 41 you're, You know it's not some magic age Or any kind of a, a big birthday or whatever But at the same time I still enjoy my birthday It is the Satanist within me Anton LaVey always um, talked about that You know the most important day The most reli- biggest religious holiday for Satanist is that uh, it's your birthday because it's the day that celebrates it. It's all about you or whatever. And uh, so, yeah, I do enjoy my birthday and it is something that um, I celebrate. I'm looking out for a meal. This, this year it's a, it's a bit less celebratory, I suppose, because with Vanessa being pregnant and she can't drink. Mm-hmm. so, And we're coming to the end of the pregnancy now. It's 35 weeks this week. So, uh, you know, I had a few glasses of wine at the weekend. It was lovely, but it's, it's not quite the same when... Uh, your better half is unable to join you. But anyway, yes, that's what uh, uh, is going on. And to celebrate, there's, of course, the um, 47s go on sale. So they're currently on sale. And they'll be on sale until Sunday the 29th. And uh, there's like 25% off the standard deck. There's money off the even the, the limited edition deck. And all the, all the cards are cheap and all that. But I will put the link in the show description that will t- teach you. That will tell you all about what, well, you know, what all the deals are or whatever. So... This week, what I want to talk about a bit about is because something I've been working on as well is getting back to the basics or like some sort of foundational practices that I I reckon, in my opinion, in my opinion only, are a good foundation to have before you go on and do any other kind of magic. You know, like these are the things that you should have in place, you know, at all times or, you know, before you start doing anything kind of too uh, insane or whatever. The first bits of these I want to talk about it comes from Stuart Wilde. And I have talked about these before in the podcast, but there's something that were instilled in me quite early, and there's something that I do think is uh, quite wise. And the stuff that, uh, like a lot of Stuart Wilde stuff, they'll take it with, uh, you know, put your own slant on your own, your own kind of thing. He was just, uh, you know, a man too. He's not a god, whatever, and he's some weird <laughs> ideas that uh, I certainly don't agree with. But this is from his, one of his earlier books, The Force. And it's called The Four Disciplines of the Initiates. And uh, it's a good kind of starting point to get into this whole thing of uh, what, you know, what kind of things should you have in place as a foundation to your magic practice. So the very first thing that he talks about is this this physical discipline. And this is like, people don't want to hear about these ones. Um, These four uh, disciplines really at all. They want to get into the magic, you know, they want to curse people. They want all the money. They want to be winning the lotto. They want to get their ex-girlfriend back. Or all of those other kind of things that most people come into magic for. You know, like I said to my friend Ender recently, and he's asked me about magic. I was like, you know, it's no one comes to magic because their life is going well. So, you know, well, I'm sure some people have. But in general, most people don't come to magic because their life is going well. There's obviously some problem they're trying to overcome. And a lot of people are just trying to look for like an easy kind of magical answer for something like that. But... Then when the things don't work out for them or that, you know, some sort of backlash or some sort of, you know, to get, don't get quite what they were expecting or whatever, they go, well, why? And my thing would always be that the reason why your magic doesn't work or doesn't work in the way that you are um, expecting it to work or wanting it to work, the problem is you and not the magic. So when you get to these disciplines, these are the things that you should be working on so that, you know, you're more in balance or you're in a better position to be a conduit of some description to uh, your, to your magic. So the first one is physical. The physical is you should do some exercise of some description. Um, we are very sedentary, sedentary, sedentary. We sit down an awful lot. <laughs> and these days, you know, with office work, and I sit, certainly sit down uh, for most of my day, I sit in front of a computer. So it's important to get up and, you know, actually exercise and do stuff like that. I try to go for a walk every day. Most days I do. A couple of kilometers, maybe four kilometers, five kilometers. And um, I tried to do yoga. Um, I, I, like I sound bad, but I did. I didn't do any yoga last week, and I can feel that in my body. Like it, it's it kind of start already. Kind of <laughs> your muscles just start getting smaller and all that kind of thing. Um, I do running occasionally. I used to do a lot of running. I just tried to get back into it. Um, 
So pick something, something that you will do and that you enjoy doing. There's no point in doing, going running or jogging or swimming or whatever it is that, you know, because you feel you have to. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to keep it up. So find something that you like doing. Walking is absolutely fine and most people can find it in some way enjoyable. And set yourself up to have a thing like, you know, bring your headphones, listen to your you know, your podcast or your music or whatever it is, or don't, you know, the, the, whatever is the thing that works for you. But I, the, as part of these the initial four disciplines, there should be some sort of exercise, physical thing involved. And for also Stuart Wilde will talk about, like, get to know what your body is as well. Like, you know, get some sort of basic knowledge of anatomy of your body so you know where your lungs are, where your heart is, what your pancreas does, you know, wh- where your liver is, how your digestion works. And all this kind of thing, like, so, you know, what your spleen is, or whatever, all of these things, you should know a bit about that so that your body knows, so you know how your body works and you're a bit more, you know, aware of that and how, how best to deal with this thing, which leads into number two, which is the second discipline, which is nutritional. Now, the thing with nutritional thing is there's a million different ideas and everyone has their own kind of, everyone's going to have their own kind of way on it and uh, find their own thing that works sorry about that that's my email going off in the background and i shall just switch it off and and i certainly don't like when people come to me and start you know demanding that the that the way they follow the exercise or their nutritional is the way i should and all of those kind of things i've talked about that ad nauseum on the podcast so nutritional i will leave to you you know what's good you know what um food you should be eating and what food you shouldn't be eating we all do and um whether that be a vegetarian diet or a carnivore diet or a caveman diet or whatever it is find the thing same as the actress find the thing that works for you but have some sort of nutritional discipline where you eat good food like i mean you can't go wrong with eating you know vegetables or fruit although some people say you shouldn't eat fruit and you know i'm sure someone will object to vegetables too so i'm not going to give you any nutritional information or thing other than you should have some sort of nutritional discipline in your thing as part of your foundation the next one um well Stuart Wilde, just before going his nutritional advice would be that you should eat more alkaline stuff than acid stuff which was a fairly popular kind of thing at one point you know, to alkalize your body and, you know, bring more into balance. And, like, it leads you to eating quite healthy in a way, but it's probably, you know, it's it's fairly woo-woo science at this point. But that was his, that was his thing. You should, uh, and, you know, that your, your your mind would be your own barometer. Like, you, you pick up something like spinach and you go, is this good for me or not? And you know intrinsically or that it is, you know, or you, then you pick up, like, a Mars bar and you just know that's not good for you like you have that kind of in, internal kinesiology test going on the whole time so pick the foods that you know is good for you and works for you and uh, go for that but definitely just you know stop eating crap all the time energy is the third one and in this you it would be this is the thing I have to work on an awful lot in that um, there's, a, there's a lot of aspects of this but one of them is like when something bad happens around me or when someone else is in bad form or when I watch something on the news, my energy kind of just leaks and I have no control over it and I just, you know, I just become a mess very quickly or I will become part of, like if I'm in the room and someone's in bad form, I will take on that bad form or bad mood really, really quickly, even if I'd been absolutely fine. It's just as if the energy, my own energy source just kind of leaks out and, uh, I lower in energy very quickly, so I have to kind of insulate myself from that. Um, but the other things in, in involved with that kind of an energy thing is if you're into it, like the, an energy thing should part of your practice should be like you know if you're into Reiki or any of those kind of energy healing, so you know involve that into it. But the energy thing, um, meditation is really good for all, all of these things because it's the energy thing that I'm talking about, the leaking probably comes mostly from a mental basis first you know that's your you, you kind of your inner talk or your self-taught leads to having an energetic response or whatever so things like cbt which is cognitive behavior therapy i found quite helpful in certain different ways meditation certainly is really helpful and uh, uh, should definitely be one of the foundations of any sort of magical practice as is doing shadow work and all of these things but i'll put extra emphasis on the meditation definitely you should be doing some sort of meditation practice every day it has countless benefits and it is overall really good for 
so much that you should, it shouldn't even have to be said that you should be doing a meditation practice every day. Find your own way of meditating and do it. Like just because if a passing walks for someone, it might work for you. You know, find find your own thing. It, meditation is a tough one, and I find it really hard. But I've I've been better at it over the, over the last while. I got no benefit from it whatsoever, or seemingly ostensibly no benefit whatsoever from it. Other than I used to always say it just gives me a sore back. But now I can't even say that because my back muscles are quite good from doing yoga, so I can sit in the the uh, seated position for a long while without getting so back. But it has done things to me. That it makes me catch myself and my thoughts an awful lot quicker than I normally would. And I can see where I'm spiraling out of control with my thoughts and worrying and stuff like that. Now, it doesn't end all worrying and it doesn't end all spiraling, but you can see it way, way quicker. So I put that under kind of the energy thing as well, even though it's not strictly energy meditation, but it leads all of these kind of things. So meditation practice, some sort of shadow work, some sort of, you know, CBT, working on yourself and that kind of thing. So that when something around you, like it's the whole thing of don't let yourself fall apart just because the world is falling apart. Like try to be more uh, dependent on, you know, on yourself for your mood. Like, so don't let it, like if your husband comes in and he's in terrible form, the aim is to not let that affect you. Obviously, it's going to affect you in some way that you have to like deal with this person, you have to interact with this person, but not let that change you energetically. So that, you know, if you were in great form, something in some terrible form, to be able, the aim is to be able to, you know, be grounded in yourself enough, solid in yourself enough to continue in your own thing while have to interacting with the thing around, whatever's going on around you. I don't watch the news and I don't listen to newspapers and I know that's in certain circles seen as, as not a good thing. I find that I've I can't change any of these things. The most part, the big things that annoy me: the war, the pestilence, the famine, the other horseman, whoever he is. And the only thing by being informed is that I can I add you know I can worry about it. That's it. And I don't think adding to the worry and despair of the world is a particularly good thing. So I just avoid it. And my life has become immeasurably better by doing that. It's still, no matter how much you avoid it, you cannot get past. Um, to see, you know, it still comes in like a, I'm. You may have Trump uh, as a keyword muted on all your social media, but you'll find you still see an awful lot of Trump. So, the thing, the aim would be though, however, to be able to watch the news and the the terrors of the world or whatever, and still be solid in yourself, and you know, not let not leak out energetically because of it. I am not there remotely, and that would all come into the whole balance element which is the fourth discipline of the initiative according to Stuart Wilde and this is to be centered and to be unaffected by the things around you so they're all kind of obviously linked in together um, and the balance in general is more than just that you know that you are um, stoic in the face of adversary or whatever but that it's balancing all things like don't take your nutritional thing to such an extreme that it becomes a bad thing you know don't take your physical exercise to such a thing that it's weakening you or whatever um, and I talked before uh, about, say, vegetarianism stuff, that being that I haven't eaten meat in eight million years or whatever it is, um, that it's, it becomes taboos. And you have to be careful of that. And this would fall under the balance thing of don't let your disciplines become taboos. You know, that, that um, don't let them, if you're doing something that's a discipline, don't let it then be something, let it then become something that now controls you. You know, to be able to, it would be suggested that you should break your um, disciplines every now and again so that they don't have the control over you one of them would be every now and again eat some meat i can't do it i it's a, it's become a taboo for me the other one and it's um wayne dyer's one of that he used to run every single day and his wife give out him about not give out him but you know tease him about saying that you know it can now control you because well, i can give up running you know i don't have to run today and decided he wasn't going to run today and then he said by 10 to 12 that night he was out running and so it had become a taboo to him right, that he couldn't just not do it. So just be careful of that in the in the whole balance of thing. The other thing I want to mention about balance at that point as well is don't because I've I fell prey to this. Don't make your entire life about magic. Don't have every you know. You have to exist in the world as well at the same time, and it's not it's not good if like all you're doing is thinking, talking, reading, discussing magic. And there's certainly time that all, all I was doing, I wasn't reading any other books other than magic books. I wasn't listening to any other podcasts other than magic podcasts. 
wasn't talking to anyone on social media other than about magic and all this kind of thing. And while it was great for a while, it, it's you are going to get burnt out. You need you need variety. You need to think about other things. You need to have other hobbies. And getting into photography was great for me because it gave me a whole different world to look at. Uh, photography is quite magical too. But, you know, it's not just reading the PGM or doing, uh, you know, a RuneSoup course or Jason Miller's course, whatever, and, you know, or reading an Alan Chapman book constantly. It gets, it's a different, you need to widen your thing, you know. And if you're reading fiction and it's still all kind of magic based, you know, read something completely different. Just, you know, change it up. Don't let, don't let magic control you in the same way as I was talking about it to become taboos. So they're just the basic kind of four disciplines of the initiatives that Stuart Wilde talked about. Um, good kind of base. So it's physical, nutritional, energetic, and, you know, to be balanced about it. Now, after that, you have those kind of things get into actual the magic kind of thing. So this is coming away from Stuart Wilde, who wouldn't have considered himself magical, although I consider himself magical in many ways. So the first thing that you probably want to deal with or start um, getting into is some sort of warding or protection type magic. And this can come in many different ways. When we were building the house here, I put some Solomon seal into the foundations in the four corners of the house as part of, of the protection thing. Um, so you're not, you're not obviously uh, all these aren't going to be able to do that because he's you know not going to be building houses or whatever. So what do you do with an already established place as well? There's two things you can ward the place you're in and you can ward yourself. And warding just means protection in a in a kind of it kind of does kind of but it means setting up things to keep things away. So you can there's a, a symbol called hamsa, which is that hand thing that you could you know put that image around your house. I have it right in front of me at the um, top of my office door. I also have the protector from the 40 servants images all around the house. Um, but I mean, you can find whatever things that you want yourself that you find good for protection. There's loads of different kind of hoodoo stuff, protection stuff, warding stuff that's really good. Like even down to, you know, mopping with certain uh, ointments or potions and stuff like that. <laughs> potions, that's all sounds hokey when I say it. But like, you know, like Van Van Oil or stuff like that when you're, you know, cleaning around with it. There's all that thing of black salt and and uh, doing your boundary around with salt, and black salt or brushing salt away from it. There's hundreds of millions of things that you can do around warding and protection. You can make sigils and servitors and all of that thing as well. Like you could set up, some people set up servitors just to protect the house, or protect the family and stuff like that. So just try, have a kind of thing where you're trying to think of a baseline foundational protection type system. Another way that you would need to kind of look at these things is if... You know, if in your office, if you're going outside your house, you know, or your place of work, you know, try and bring something in there. If you can, you know, install a servitor and some sort of statue or thing that you can have on your desk or even have a sigil up or those type of things can be, you know, they can be effective. And they can, even from a non woo point of view, having that something there can make you feel more protected and therefore a bit more easy to. Social media, you can obviously just stick up very obvious sigils on your profile page or your you know, your uh, wallpaper or whatever it is, or you can hide them in, you know, sigils in, you know, make write your sigil in black and put it in the black part of a, of a photo that you have as your, you know, your profile pic or something like that. All that, just, you know, anywhere where stuff is coming in, where there might be kind of any sort of an element of, that you might need for some protection. Think of it as that this kind of stuff is the equivalent of your firewall that you would have on your computer. Just don't, you know, this stuff in, this stuff not in, you know, and, and be, you can be quite descriptive with that and make up your own kind of firewall, personal firewall rules if you want as well. But definitely something you should look at, some sort of um, basic protection or warding. The next thing you can get into then is your banishing. So you're clearing, uh, you know, the, the, the area you're in. That can be your house or your personal kind of space. Lots of ways to do this. And I have a, a post on Adventures and Woo Woo all on banishing, which I will also put in the show description. And uh, that'll give you loads of links, loads of different places where you can check it out. But there are things like the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, which is mostly coming from the Golden Dawn kind of scheme of things. And that's... Um, Said to be done daily. I did it for a long while. There's a, a warning that you can have with the less banishing ritual of the pentagram, but it's probably more to just when you're doing any kind of magic daily or you're getting into that kind of mindset or whatever. And the things can appear to get a lot worse while you're doing it. And that's just movement and uh, things like that. So, you know, be careful of that and just be aware of it. That um, It just means things are clearing out and it may seem a bit heavy at the time. And it certainly got a bit dark for me when I when I was doing the less banishing ritual of the pentagram first 
but uh, it is just you know the clearing out of stuff and uh, you know that's how it goes sometimes if you don't like Les uh Ritual of the Pentagram there's the, also the Star Ruby uh, Alistair Crowley's kind of version of the Banishing Ritual um, I've done one that's on the website on Adventures from Weber. I'll link again it's the Roman Ritual that was because people were always giving out about not giving out being concerned about using God names from the Christian thing so I go well let's just use any names um, so check that out if, if you think that's in it. There's the 47 Spanish and Ritual that uh, was posted in the 47 Facebook group that I will also link to. But I mean, there's that, it's even very simple things you can do. There's, you know, your saging of your house, which is just basically you burn some white sage and go around and uh, clear out your house, you know. And that has antibacterial properties as well. So it's, there's more than just woo-woo. You are actually, in a sense, cleansing your house. There's that heck is has heck is heck is heck is este babebio, which is uh, way away all things profane. That's my favorite one. That just kind of you know, and it's I sweep my hand and way and push things away and that kind of clearing. But the probably the best banishing or clearing ritual you can do is to clean your room and to clean your surrounding areas, and not sit in you know in a mess, particularly your bedroom or your office table or whatever. If by clearing up that you will clear up your mental space and all of those things so that's probably the best banishing ritual is to clean your room which is like the buzz of the minute also clean yourself like you know shower keep clean keep yourself you know in that kind of tip top thing i know when i was going through some of my heavy days of depression and stuff i found one of the first things that happens is i'll stop having showers and i'll stop looking after myself you know i'll stop cutting my hair i'll stop any of that kind of stuff. And so that's like a, a very a easy pinpoint kind of sign that things are going off. And um, so it's there's obviously some element in it of uh, cleaning, cleaning, keeping yourself cleansed and stuff like that. Now, so then after that, after you have done your, your, your warding, your firewall, you've cleaned your area, you've cleaned yourself. You want to now to start getting into things. Well, I want my life to get better and I want things to be... To, uh, you know, things to improve, or I want those certain kind of things that I always want to be on the go. And what I mean by that is you always want things like good health, um, good finances, good luck, you know, um, happy relationships, uh, or whatever, all of these things that you want, will constantly always want as a baseline type thing. And in this kind of area, what you can use, you can use talismans, you can use sigils, you can use servitor, and it's all going to be down to what kind of person you are, what, what kind of things you're into the difference i suppose between a talisman a sigil and a servitor and this is my opinion other opinions are available please check them out a servitor is a sigil that has a personality um and is a sigil is probably in a sense sense used for one thing one as one go in my head that's how i see it as that i want 50 euro sigil i want um it's you know in a servitor sense i i want to create an entity that will always be on the lookout for more financial opportunities for me servitor has a personality it's an ongoing thing a talisman is an ongoing thing without a per, without a personality so you would have like luck charms or manifestation um bags or that kind of thing so that's how i would see um sigil one time kind of a thing servitor ongoing personality talisman not no personality just an object that attracts things so say you had a stone that you had that you've turned into a talisman for wealth it's just attracting wealth whereas the servitor will have its own kind of in a sense but not really because i don't like the word it'll have its own kind of agency or autonomy and is actively going out and doing what servitors do so you would probably want to at some point set up either servo or talisman or just two sigils if you if you like ongoing sigils for good health, good wealth, uh, happiness, um, good relationships, f uh, career stuff and all that. So they have these things kind of pick, you know, five to ten things that you will always want on the go on all the time to be influences in your life. And uh, have, you know, so that again, as a foundation and then, you know, after that, once you have those things kind of picked out what you want. Then you can do your indiv individual targeted magic. You know, so if you have uh, a talisman, an ongoing servitor, ongoing for good, you know, f career stuff, then you, you know, you'd hit individual career goals or problems with sigils or rituals or whatever. But you still want an overall kind of thing going on.
Then I suppose the other thing, uh, the last kind of a thing that you would probably want is some sort of offering type ritual that you would want to get in. And this can be, in, you know, aimed at anything. It's just kind of to return the flow, man, or um, to keep things going, like, so that it's not just, that you're not just basically all take, you know, I want all this, that you're, you know, you're keeping it circulated or whatever. So give some offerings, you know, and this can be simple things as burning some incense for, you know, your favorite saint, God, demon, you know, your, your, your dead granny, your, you know, inspirational dead, you know, like offer, you know, George Harrison or David Bowie or, you know, whatever, um, light a, light a candle for people, you know, just this, do some sort of offering thing and try to, I do offerings kind of daily. It's one of the, my big magical practices. Do lots of offerings to the four servants, and do do them without looking for stuff. You know that just for the for doing it, like it's to build up in a sense. Uh, if you want a, a, a good relationship, a reciprocal relationship, so you know, don't only give offerings. Um, it's like don't just go to your friends when you want stuff. You know that's a great way to ruin friendship. Just do stuff for your friends, or do stuff for your your woo woo friends, and that kind of thing. But it's definitely worth doing. And also, something that works well for me, um, if you're stuck in a particular area, like say your money's not going well and you're not getting it in, um, give some of your money away. Do something for someone else that you can do or whatever. And that seems to get the circle or the cycle going again. You know, So if, if you're stuck in your career, do something good for someone else's career um, or any of those type of things. It just seems to, because I think what happens is that if you're, say, the money one's an easy one to explain that if you're feel that you don't have much money, you start kind of getting in on yourself and getting very closed in and, you know, very, uh, mean, I suppose, in one sense with your money, you're a bit more frugal or, you know, you just don't want it to go away because you don't feel you have enough of it. And that kind of can stop the flow of the whole thing. So if you can loosen and surrender to that kind of thing, it seems to, you know, put it, but the, the unblock the, the energy of it. So you, you know, it's, I've talked about this before, so it's, it's, it's not a new idea, whatever, but just, you know, try to unblock it. Gives, if you need money, give some money away. Not a, a stupid thing, you know, or just that other thing of do something that you would only do. So, right, you need your rent paid uh, by Friday and it's Tuesday and you don't have it. You need $100, you only have 50 Do something that you'd only do if the rent was paid, like have a takeaway or something like that. A small talking leap of faith gesture. It's not go out and, you know, be in, insane with your money and spend it all. Do something that just would initiate the uh, and unblock the flow of the energy. Offerings are great for that. Then other than that, you know, you, you know, t uh, goal lists are great. Vision boards work well for me. Um, all of those things, you know, just knowing the, one of the hardest things about any kind of life in general, but magic in particular, is knowing what you want and try to pinpoint down what you want. What do you want? At the beginning of the BOTA um, lessons, the very first one is, you know, you have to come up with what are the, what do you want? Like, what is it you want? And I find find that very hard because I like. Like if you had a, a, a you know a wish or you yeah, were granted a wish or whatever, what would you wish for? What do you want your life to be? And that's quite hard to answer. Well, it is for me. I, I won't speak for you, but you should work on that. You should work on what what it is you want because until you know what you want, you don't know what direction you're going. And you and it may start with knowing what you don't want. And that's a, a, a good a place to start. As you know, well, I don't definitely don't want this. But try to come up with some sort of direction or things you want. Vision board's great for that. Goal list. Or just writing it down, what you want. Now, I'm sure there's uh, hundreds of other kind of foundational magic type things that you should be doing. And I'd love to hear yours. What what, what do you think is a foundational one? But I think kind of the, the disciplines of your, your uh, physical, your nutritional, your energy, and having a balance with all that. The four disciplines of initiatives come from Stuart Wilde. Then your basic warding and protection your banishing and clearing and then you setting up your talismans or your ongoing magic of things that you always want having some sort of return thing of offerings or doing stuff for others have that as part of your practice and then having a vision for your life and working out what you actually want i think that's pretty good cover you know i think covers most things of grounding um the groundwork of, of magic and the foundation. But again, I'd like to hear what you have to say or what, what you think about it and what I missed or what you disagree with. I can't 
can't imagine anyone would necessarily disagree. The only thing you're going to disagree with is how you'd approach these things rather than these things. Like, you could disagree about what nutritional thing is a good thing to to follow. But I think most people would go that you should have good nutrition. You know, same for, you know, you say, well, I don't think people... That's funny, though, actually. I, the, the one time I someone did suggest that having a physical or any sort of exercise thing was a bad thing. I can't really remember what the actual... Uh, train of thought was but someone did try to make a point that it was a bad thing to me once but anyway that is what it is so uh so yeah so that was the tommy kelly podcast and uh, i hope that helps in some way it certainly helped me to get my thoughts together on that and those type of things that you probably need to go on the talisman stuff or the the ongoing magic the baseline magic stuff like good fortune good health and all that is not something that i have done in a while that I, it's not something i have to work on the energy leaking that's a huge problem for me allowing other people in other situations another thing to destroy my own integrity and my own energy and that's something i definitely have to work on but uh, a lot of the other stuff i have like the warding and the banishing and the clearing and all that nutritional i'm pretty good on physical definitely could be better but I think my physical kind of things are there's definitely a mental and emotional thing going on with a lot of us. Again, I said that before. I've talked about that before. But anyway, yeah. So if you want to know more about or more about me or what I do, you can go to adventuresandwoo.com. And on that page, you'll find all the stuff. There's the 40 servants stuff is all there, which is a magic and divination system I put together. Uh, the four devils are there. The, all the episodes of the podcast are there. You can get links to the YouTube channel, which has vlogs, and sort of the Forty Servants video course, which is a free course that just talks you through the whole system of the Forty Servants. Um, there's the Magic Grimoire, uh, the, the Magic Primal, which is the if you're new to magic, it just starts at the beginning. Go here's all the links. So you should go check out YouTube videos and books and stuff. And there's banishing, there's servitors, there is sigils. All of that kind of stuff. So if you're new to it, check that out. Um, I'm on the Facebooks, Tommy Kelly Artist, uh, at Tommy Kelly on Twitter, at Tommy Kelly on Instagram. There's the 40 Servants Facebook group, which is well over 2,000 members now, which is pretty awesome. There's the Adventures in Woo Woo Facebook page, which is like 25,000 likes or something, maybe less than that, um, which is equally great. And uh, yeah, so there's plenty going on. If you want to help, please share, like, and tell other people about the podcast or the website or any of the things I do. And if you want to help in a financial way, then I do have a Patreon. It comes as standard these days, it seems. And you can get that at TommyKelly.com, which is T-O-M-M-I-E Kelly.com. And in return for your hard-earned money that you give to me, I send you, I offer you stuff in return. So just PDFs of the Grimoire of the Forty Servants. There's the digital deck. There's a monthly servitor, shadow working, meditation thing we're doing called a journey. There's plenty of stuff. You get all the stuff, uh, the podcast on a Monday. Uh, the rest of the world gets it on a Thursday. All of the stuff is there. If you go to the sidebar on TommyKelly.com, which is the Patreon page, you will find all of the rewards that uh, are available to you for the different tiers and stuff like that. So good people of the internet. This is another episode of the podcast over. So for this week, I wish you great health, wealth, luck, happiness. And uh, there's a saying in Ireland, it's just made a road rise with you, which is, it's nice in the sense that, you know, just may, may life be made easy for you. And uh, that's what I wish for you this week, <laughs> this week. May the road rise to meet you and may you, you know, may all your struggles be downhill ones. And I will talk to you all next week. Have a wonderful week. Be well. Be well.